Thank you, everyone. We're going to uh, get this Youth Service Subcommittee started. This is the Youth Service Subcommittee. Um, would the clerk call roll call, please? Chairman Robinson. Here. Councilor Gitchie. Here. Councilor Yem. Yeah, here. Three, three present. So this meeting has been called to discuss working with youth program providers to identify areas of the city with programming gaps and develop plans for sharing information with our residents. Um, I'd like to thank everybody that came. I see a good amount of people in attendance, um, all different youth program providers, and, and I really look forward to kind of utilizing this as um, a roundtable discussion to see how we can kind of help each other, a partnership here to, to extend programming that's existent or missing in the community and strengthen what people are already doing. And, um, I mean, there's a great pool of resources in this room right now, and, and I think um, through conversation, we can definitely make sure that all areas of our city are covered for the youth in the upcoming spring, summer, fall season. So thank everybody for attending. Um, would anybody like to speak? Any other counselors in attendance? If I could ask uh, everyone to, uh, to pray for the people of Ukraine tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Chairman Robinson. Um, I, I guess one of the big things that all of you bring to the table is you're really the future of our city. Um, what you do is the most important piece to our city is bringing the youth and giving them hope and dreams and, and giving them reality at the same time. You know, today I was at a, um, we were watching the lifeguard portion of the city and, and how they're having so much trouble getting young adults to join the program and try to become lifeguards. And I think all of you have resources that could help them try to get more lifeguards so that we can open all the pools this year and try to do those things. So when we look at April vacation, and, and the, I'll let um, the rec department also spell this out, but I think that we're looking to get more people involved. It's a free program um, to get lifeguards, and they pay you in the end. And when you look at the program, all of you have email lists that can help out. All of you can reach out to youth that maybe we can't get to or, or the city can't get to to provide these type of services so that more kids can enjoy the pools that we all are desperate for, or the splash pads and stuff like that. So I don't think that th the meaning of this meeting really is to bring all of you and, and use your resources to better a city and try to bring everybody together so that we can reach more and more kids and, and try to give them hope and dreams and, and meet other kids that they probably will be best friends with in the future. That's how I met my best friends when I was a kid, was through rec programs or baseball programs or some other arts and craft thing when we were kids at, at rec or something like that. But, you know, you, you play a major, major part in the future of the city. Most people who run for political offices helped out at the youth stage one time in their life or another, and, and they really developed from there. And that's how I got to these positions was because I dedicated my time to Young, young kids and tried to give them hope and dreams and understand that now they're starting to graduate from college, so I really feel very old. But um, as, as we look around the room, I think if, if we could come to the mic and you know at least tell us what you do for the city and maybe we can try to get people put together so that we can try to make it an easier journey through the city for a lot of the, the kids that we're trying to reach. And I, and I thank uh, Chairman Robinson for putting this together and, and Councilor Yim for being here. But I do think our rec department could use your help. You know, you guys have big, big email lists and service that could help them reach faster, cheaper, and get to the, the same core audience that we desperately need to open the pools and, and other areas that we can try to make, you know, the city a better place. So. Um, I'm, I'm interested in listening to the people at least come up and speak. The only thing that we would ask is that you state your name clearly for the clerk in your address. And um, we, we really like to open it up so that we can get you involved because realistically, you're the ones who are at the ground level making things happen. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to the chairman. Thank you, Councilor Gidjia. Um I think I'd like to start this because um, 
This all started, we got placed on the subcommittee because we all decided, you know, that was something we actively wanted to pursue with this council. So one of the first groups that I've reached out to to have a conversation naturally was our own um, parks and rec department. It, it, and I just kind of wanted to pick the, their brain. I mean, short staff and they pull off miracles for the kids of the community. So um, if, if, you, if you don't mind, one of you guys, um, would you mind speaking on at least the, the plan on the hiring for this summer, for one, for two, the needs of the lifeguards, as was mentioned by Councillor Gitchia. And um, because I know talking to some other members of the community organizations, their act action uh, looking for some kids to kind of help out with some of the programs that they're looking to operate. So again, th th this kind of round table discussion, there might be some areas where the organizations are able to work with each other to kind of fill the gaps that, that might exist. Hi, I'm Caitlin Hickey from the Lowell Recreation Department. Um, so we are looking for especially lifeguards this year, but also kids to work our youth adventure programs for kids ages five to 11, as well as we're hoping to bring back our tiny top program for kids ages three and four. Um, so we are going to be taking applications from the public beginning on April 1st, and everybody can find our applications right on our website, which is lowellrec.com. And yeah, you just have to be 14 years of age um, by the time you apply and you don't need any previous experience or anything. Obviously it helps if you have babysat in the past or have experience working with kids. Um, I know last summer we had a lot of the 14 and 15 year olds, I believe. So we're looking for the older age range too, but obviously we love the younger kids that work for us because we're hoping to like keep them year after year. Um, so we are looking at starting our interview process during April vacation week. So we try and do a pretty quick like turnaround once we get the applications in, setting the kids up with interviews, getting them on the phone. We haven't done in-person interviews since before COVID at this point. We've done over the phone interviews, um, conference calls between Peter and I both. Um, but yeah, so we're looking at April vacation week and then once we interview the kids and if we like them and we wanna hire them, um, HR sends them all the paperwork in the mail and they just need to fill everything out as soon as possible, bring it right back into HR and we try and get them on the payroll as soon as possible to get ready for the summer. Thank you. Um, and, and about ballpark, how, how many positions are you looking to hire for the summer? Uh, we're looking for around 215 to 220. Um, obviously we're still in the budget process, but that's about the number we look at every year. Uh, last year we were not able to get that number. As we know, some of the aquatics facilities weren't able to fill. Um, but we are looking at about a 215 to 220. Uh, we had about 145, 250 at the end of last year. So we're hoping a big bulk of them come back, but there's no guarantee. Uh, Pre-COVID, we used to have about an 80% return rate for employees year to year. So we don't know what it'll be now that we've kind of gone back to the drawing board post-COVID. Uh, and one of the other things to keep in mind too is that we try to operate facilities in all parts of the city. Uh, so if a kid lives in the Highlands or Centerville or Belvedere, they can work in their neighborhood usually. So um, it's not like if you get a job at the mall or the movies and you have to try to get there. Most of our kids have uh, a walking distance location to their house where they can try to work at. Uh, we try to keep kids in the neighborhood. It helps build a small community inside each neighborhood. So it kind of works twofold. It helps us to staff the locations. It also lets kids know that they don't have to leave their neighborhood to get good quality programming. You know, they can stay where they are. They can work with kids of, you know, a lot of the kids that we work with, their siblings are friends of our employees. You know, they know the families, the kids know each other. You know, it works out really well for us doing that. Uh, the other thing about the lifeguarding core that we're looking to hire is we're looking to hire about 40 kids just for lifeguarding. That's part of that 215 number. And we teach the class for free for anybody who works for us. So if they work for us, they get certified, they make an honest attempt to work for us, uh, they'll get the certification for free at the end of the summer. The cards are good for two years, so they can go to work somewhere else if they choose to, and it's not gonna be um, an issue once they work for us for a year. If they get certified with us and decide not to work for us and go somewhere else, we charge $200 less than most other places charge for the class if they're gonna work somewhere else as well. We charge 150 if they work for someone else. Other places charge 350 just to get certified, even if you work for them. Um, so that's one big thing that we also do with those kids. 
And um, then when kids need to be recertified or if we need additional people, we teach all the classes in-house. So our swim lessons instructors, we all arrange certifications for our lifeguard managers, our waterfront lifeguards. We find ways to get everybody certified in-house at a reduced cost for them. So if they work for us for a year, they don't want to be a lifeguard anymore, they want to move up, we can find either a no cost or a very low cost way for them to get certified in another class to then move up and make more money the following summer for us. So those are all the different things that we try to do. And like Caitlin said, we're looking to hire from ages 14 and up. Uh, our oldest employee last summer was 67. So we hire right up the age range. Um, and we work with kids anywhere from three and up. And with swim lessons, sometimes we actually have kids a little bit younger than that doing swim lessons if we can do the parent and me classes. Thank you. And um, what are the, do you know ballpark what's the pay ranges? For the positions you're looking to fill? So the basic staff positions start at minimum wage and then they can go all the way up to I think our site managers at most of our summer programs make about $18 an hour. Um, so every level is more requirements. So a staff member doesn't have any basic requirements other than just to be a 14 years of age. Supervisors and up we look for kids who are certified in CPR and first aid which we also teach in house and give to the kids for free if they take the class with us if they work for us. Uh, we also look for kids. We try to find kids who have cars. That way, if we need to get equipment to a site, we have more people who can pick up equipment and bring it back. So every level, there's a little bit more of a requirement, um, but we pay anywhere from 14, uh, I think it's 14, 25 this summer for minimum wage going up, all the way up to 18 or 19 for traveling managers. And then our lifeguarding course starts at 15, 25. And then if they teach swim lessons, they can make up to 16. If they're lifeguard managers, they can make 17. If they work at the waterfront, it's 17 to 18, 25 for the, w, for the WSI uh, swim lesson manager at the waterfront. So there is an opportunity to make some good money. And most of the kids, because we work with the summer school program, our programs will start either the last week of June or the very first week of July and go for about six weeks. Um, and you know, kids can make significant money because they work in 35 to 37 hours a week, most of the positions. Thank you very much. Um, and if you don't mind briefly touching on what we also mentioned, and, and this might be an opportunity for a lot of the organizations in here. I remember we had a conversation about the brochure that uh, your department puts out annually. So Caitlin will talk about that because she puts together an eight page brochure every year. And on the last page of the brochure, there's a map of the city that highlights where all the different programs are. So if someone reads about a program, but they don't know where it is, they can go right to the map on the back, find their location, the city where they're looking at trying to find a program, and it'll tell them what programs are offered closest to them. So Caitlin. Yep, so every year I put together the Healthy Summer brochure. A lot of people in this room, I'm sure I reach out to you and try and get um, even just a little blurb about what your organization is and what your contact info is, um, what ages you service and all of that. So if anybody here um, hasn't gotten in the brochure and wants to get on that, just make sure I can like reach out and have people reach out to you too, but I can give my contact information here too before I leave. Um, but yeah, so it's usually about eight pages. Um, last year it was a little bit shorter just based on COVID and. I have like, I pushed up the deadline because I know we used, we used to print them out for the schools every year and drop them off to them. So the schools were kind of like wanting us to get the word out sooner. Um, but yeah, usually I have the deadline about end of April or so. So that way we have enough time to print the brochures, bring them out to the schools or send them out virtually to all the schools. Uh, but yeah, all the summer programming information is involved in there. I put on the back, the map that Peter was talking about, it'll have on there the address of the location, whether or not they serve food, um, if people can just go and get you know, a free lunch at that program, if they have activities there, um, et cetera. So yeah, I'll be reaching out to everybody. I think I already started reaching out to people, but um, yeah, I'm in the process of putting that together right now. So that should be going out within the next couple of months or so. And some organizations, if they don't have specific information for the summer yet, they give us just information about where to find that information. We can put it up. So when we create the brochure, we have in the past printed brochures to go to the schools, but we also create a PDF that we put on the lowerec.com website. And uh, Caitlin also manages our Facebook page, so she puts the links up there. So even if you don't have specific information at that point of what you're offering for the summer, at least the uh, contact information for your organization and uh, what your hopes are or what you want people to know about your organization can go right in the brochure, even if we don't have specific information. Thank you. And, um do you guys have cards to hand out or, or anything that we can kind of get to the organizations in attendance or? 
Um, I, we can give them our contact information, absolutely. Okay, thanks. Um, so again, since we're sticking and starting the conversation around needs, um, there's a great need to fill potentially 220 positions with just the city's rec department. Uh, would any other organizations like to maybe step up to the podium or speak on some of the needs their organization is facing currently on um, anticipated program that they want to offer this year? Please just introduce yourself and uh, state your name and the organization. Sure. Uh, Heather Donovan. I work for the Mass Hire Low Career Center, which is also a city department. So I thought I would just jump right in after that. Um, we have a young adult specific career center at 115 Merrimack Street. Uh, Eric's actually been, he came last year. And um, after this meeting, I do have some materials actually for you three and my card. So if you wanted to come for a tour and a chat, we can definitely set that up. Um, but so we have our office at 115, pretty much everyone in here we work with currently as well. So um, I just wanted to thank you for putting this together. I think this is great and a wonderful resource for the city. And I'm so happy to see that the young people are being put sort of at the forefront um, because I think it's important for, for moving forward. Um, we have a very large summer program, summer work experience program. We hire between 250 to 300 young people, between 14 to 24. And that entails seven weeks of work 25 hours per week out at a, a work site. Um, many of the work sites actually are here in this room. Boys and Girls Club, I see Parks and Rec Department. We all sort of partner together to make that happen. Part of our program involves work readiness. So young people have to complete 15 to 20 hours of soft skills training with us, both before and during the summer program. So they get to learn some soft skills and then go out to work and put those skills in place at the same time. We include some financial literacy in there so that when we're giving them a paycheck for their work, we're also teaching them what to do with it. Um, so that's one of our big, big needs. We also host a job fair at Lowell High School, which is coming back this year. It did not happen because of COVID. Um, April 12th. So I don't know, Peter, if you want to have a table maybe for your lifeguards. Um, and some of your other positions, if you want to just let me know, we can definitely get you set up with that. Um, and that goes for anyone else as well. We are looking for businesses to come to the job fair. Um, we hosted a job fair at the vocational school in, I believe, September or October. So the Lowell High School is April 12th, and that does focus a lot on summer jobs, so they have a lot of opportunities. Um, and then our center as a whole offers free workshops, free services. We have a high school equivalency classroom on site. So a young person who is looking to get their GED or high set can actually come and take class. That's specific to 14 to 24 year olds at our center. Um, so that's great. And we do occupational training programs and try to um, guide pathways for, for students. So we're inside the Career Academy doing pathway programming um, with a social worker that I have on staff. So she co-sits with us and at the Career Academy. She works on um, different paths other than college, or if college is what they're after, then she helps with that as well. So um, that's a little bit about some of the programs that we run. I think that we see probably around 500 young people uh, a year, which has, has been great. And we just opened our center that was specific to the young people um, in June. We had a grand opening ceremony. I believe some folks here in this room were here for that as well. We also partner with Youth Build. So we have a job developer who is able to specialize specifically in things like resume writing, interview skills, that works over at YouthBuild so that they can provide the participants with the same resources that they would get at the Career Center if they were there all the time. So again, um, a lot of different things, and I do have a little breakdown of, of sort of all of the programs that we run, but we're open every day. We also do a big event during April vacation where we try to hire those 250 to 275 young people. So we have been doing in-person. We do assessments, try to figure out what they're, what they're looking to do both now and in future work. And that's kind of where we guide them to what might be a good possibility. Excellent, thank you. Um, again, it, it's so far with two organizations, it, it looks like we have a good amount of opportunity for our young people in the community. Um, <laughs> in my head spinning with all these possibilities, yes, please.
Um, I'd also like to introduce the group to, um, Lisa, would you mind get, getting up to the podium? Um, I don't, I'm not sure, they're, they're one of the newer organizations and it's Lowell Youth Leadership. And um, I know it's something that was occurring in the past and they, they're kind of bringing it back. And uh, I think it's a unique story and, and, and I'll let the organization kind of explain where it came about and, and where they're trying to go. My name's Lisa Ansara, and we're with the Lowell Youth Leadership Program. So I'm Andres Lopez, and I'm as well with the LYLP. Uh, my name is Vren Chan. I'm also with Lowell Youth Leadership Program. I'm going to let Andy speak because he was one of the former members who's restarting the whole program, so I'm going to let him do the talking. We struggle with this because I was saying, Lisa, you should go, but I guess I'll go. Uh, so just to give you some context, we were, um, not to over talk, but this was a program that we, I attended as a youth. It was the NYSP, and it kind of, due to funding, um, kind of vanished. It serviced a lot of kids in the community. And so a lot of us that are sort of part of it were, were campers then, and so we kind of felt really passionate about that program that existed, and we wanted to kind of revamp it, change it, and um, and so we met together and we created this LYLP. And some of the things that we did is that we're going to offer some sort of social component, a development component, and then a physical activity sort of movement component. Uh, it's going to serve as 10 to 16. It's going to supposed to offer um, high quality service for kids. So we're we're going to offer um, you know golf, tennis. Um, Basketball, we we'll also offer robotics, uh, swimming every day. Um, we want to teach them financial literacy. We also want to teach um, some, uh, some rock climbing, some ropes course, some project adventure. So it's a really holistic approach to the camper. It, the idea is to give them access, and um, that's sort of the thing that we thought about that we grew up. The people that kind of, the, the people around me that grew up with it, the program NYSP was like, we had access, you know, we didn't, we never really got the opportunity to try golf, right? Or we never had the opportunity to taste like, you know, these high quality foods and, you know, and um, now we have it. And so we, we want to offer this to, we need 10 employees, uh, kids over 18, that could be counselors. Um, we also, we're going to service about 100 kids. It's going to be at the Greater Lowell Technical High School. Um, and like I said, it's a really good program. We want to make sure that we uh, provide kids uh, with high quality instruction. So, you know, it's going to be instructors that are professionals at their field that are going to teach these kids um, these skills that normally they wouldn't have access to. So, I don't know if I missed anything. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's going to be two weeks in uh, June. It's starting June 30th to July 15th, and it's our uh, introduction to the program. So, we're hoping each year we increase the weeks by at least one or two weeks every year. NYSP was a six-week program, so eventually we'd like to get to a six-week program. But right now we have, um, we did some crowdfunding, so we have the money to do a two-week program. And so it's for 10 to 16-year-olds. Um, and we will, we will have buses that will bring them from different areas in Lowell out to Greater Lowell Tech. And we can, we're going, they are giving us their entire facility to use. So we have their pool, their gym, their rock climbing wall, tennis courts, basketball courts, their track and field. So that's great. We also are providing breakfast and lunch. We're working with Youth Build and the Merrimack Valley Food Bank to be able to provide breakfast and lunch to the participants. Do you want to add to that? Yeah. Um. <clears throat> So again, um, bus transportation will be provided from different parts of the city. I know um, access is, you know, a huge problem for a lot of the youth. Um, <clears throat> and, um, you know, I just want to speak from experience as myself, as a former camper. And I, you know, I, I went through the whole continuity as a camper, uh, junior counselor, which I was hired to the city here. And, uh, at, you know, when I was in high school, and that was like my first job experience ever. And so that, you know, um, that kind of led me into, um, you know, um, working with um, youth development um, and also as an educator. And then um, so that continuity that, that um, as has led me to where I'm at right now. Um, and that I'm, I'm an educator here at uh, the Lowell Community Charter Public School. 
And a lot of us here that um, uh, work with the program, a lot of us are from education background, a lot of us teach, a lot of us um, has a lot of experience with youth development. And so we're now we're all trying to bring this back and provide services for the youth in the city. Thank you very much for By all way, you guys. Uh, thank you. I, I've never been in a situation where seeing it from the innocent, I, I apologize to interrupt. It just really empower, uh, I feel sort of in the emotion of seeing a lot of people here within the community that I, I didn't see this growing up. I always felt like, when are we getting an opportunity? It's just, I, I appreciate you taking the time to collectively come up and just at least let's start something so that we all kind of connect in some way to obviously we have that common goal about how do we keep lower going and service our kids. So I appreciate that guys. You're welcome. And honestly, it's, uh, that's how I got my first taste of any of this is, uh, working summer youth employment and training program to the parks and rec. So I realized in the community, we have so many great resources. And I think a lot of times it's something as simple of as getting everyone in the same room for a conversation. And, and it's amazing what can come out of that. And uh, I thank you. I mean, you yourself, you guys went through the program. It, it moved you enough that you want to give back and that's admirable. Thank you very much. And um, are you guys currently also looking for hiring for staff members at the time or have you filled your slots or? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Very much. Mr. Chair, there's a couple on Zoom if you want to take them. Uh, sure, thank you. Um, if you'd like to yeah, bring in the Zoom. Yeah, they've been quite. Um, Olu Abraham. I. She has to unmute. Can you please unmute? I'm on mute, sorry. Hi everyone, um, can you hear me now? Is that better? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. So, um, hi everyone, my name is Olu Abraham. I'm the founder and executive director of Kids in Tech. We are a role-based nonprofit. Um, we provide after-school programs around STEM education for kids and youth in the area. Um, we've been around well since 2016. Um, and as our flagship program for kids ages eight to 14 is our after school tech club program where essentially we partner up with schools and other youth serving agencies once or twice a week. Um, we bring um, hands on projects and technology. So that looks like building your first computer, building your first video game, learning how to do graphic design skills. Um, so our instructors and our volunteers who are often other STEM professionals come into the schools or youth serving agencies for academic year long club. Before COVID kids were able to get access to local um, companies and universities working on the cutting edge of technology innovation. So whatever they're learning in our tech club, they get to see the real world application and hopefully um, whatever they're learning in our tech club, they get to complement what's happening in the school day. And so I bring this up because tech has, um, Lowell to me has always been a city, a city of innovation. If we look at the mills, that was high tech back in the day. And if we look now currently, UMass Lowell and the greater area, there's a lot of biotech and tech firms. So I say to say this, that the future is one of STEM. And then I hope that um, we can think of ways in school and out of school, how do we make sure we are our kids are scientists, technologists, artists, and the mathematicians we need uh, so that they can thrive in the 21st century and beyond. Um, there's a lot of great work happening in rural, and I just wanted to just um, highlight that I think as an ecosystem, we really need to work together to figure out how can we get our kids prepared. And I think that one is if our kids have the competencies in STEM, they will be successful and the future is bright for them. So that's what I wanted to add. Um, also, my last comment, it will be 20% of the time kids are in school, 80% of the time they're after school. So it's really important that we 
um, find ways to really work together to make sure that all kids are um, have a community behind them, cheering them on, and building a strong ecosystem so kids know about everything that's available to them and that we have set up all of our kids in our communities to success in school and out of school. So thank you so much for your time and listening to my comments. Is it one more? It's Devin Gilmore. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Yep. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Devin Gilmore. I'm the Substance Use Prevention Grant Coordinator for the Lowell Health Department. Um, I wanted to come to this meeting uh, primarily because we do have two upcoming community roundtables next week um, that I know some of you in attendance will be presenting at as well that are focused toward um, kind of the same purpose, right? Making sure that we're all on the same page when it comes to the upcoming uh, youth programs and the availability of resources for young people in Lowell. Um, so we'll be spotlighting some community resources at those spaces. Um, the first is in person at Pollard Memorial Library. That's going to be happening on March 1st, so next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Um, it'll last approximately an hour and a half and start out with some spotlight presentations for youth programs. Um, if anyone would like, I'm taking extensive notes um, and I, I definitely plan to, if any parents um, or family members ask about the availability of summer programs or, or really anything, um, that's been spoken about so far. I, I definitely plan to plug those programs. Um, you can reach out to me at dgilmore, D-G-I-L-M-O-R-E at lolma.gov if you'd like uh, me to distribute any uh, pamphlets or flyers advertising your programs there as well uh, because we are looking to have that family-based audience there. Uh, where we can share these resources. The second session will be virtual. Um, there are some flyers around the community um, in the Lowell Sun as well, um, and they will probably be going out next week to parents of schools. Um, so the link is on the flyer, but you can reach out to my email that I just advertised as well. If you'd like the link to that meeting, that's going to be next Wednesday, March 2nd at 12 p.m. on Zoom. Thank you, that's all. Thank you very much. Would anyone else, oh, sorry, Councilor Gitche. The, the challenge we're gonna have is to keep the conversation going. And, and I think all of you are here for a reason and, and we really would love to hear you come up and, and tell us um, something that can help us help you. And that, that's really why we had this. Uh, when I look out here, I look at people who are been extremely successful in building some youth organizations. I, I look at like Centerville Baseball, it, it was basically falling apart. There was nothing left to it and, and it came back. And, and the Acre also, you, you see you got Keith Rudy and Bob Belanger and then you look at Highland, you got Ryan Rourke and we got PYO also. And then we look at some of the youth build, we look at Mass Hire did an unbelievable job over the summer for us. Um, just the skills the kids learned and the skills that they're gonna to take to the next level and be able to be employable was amazing. And then you see Peter and Caitlin and you know all of you, we really would like to hear you because we wanna keep the conversation going. And just coming here tonight and then never coming back is gonna do nothing for anybody. So we wanna hear what, and this is a free advertisement for all of your leagues and everything else. So we're here saying, and it may be a 60 year old person who's watching this, I, I don't know. It may not be the youth target organization that you want, but you know, the grandmothers are the ones who are bringing some of these kids to the baseball fields and to the, all of your programs and saying, get a job and, and all these things that we were told when we were younger. So right now there's a challenge in every community at getting the youth involved in the things that we all enjoyed and loved and, and put us together. So realistically we just need people to come up and tell us how we can help and then give us what they're doing so that we can actually provide some kind of service or help through either the rec department the little health department or each one of you um, coming here tonight is, is the start of a long conversation that should take decades it, it should go on for a long long time but if we don't if we're shy and don't want to come to a microphone and say how we've changed things or how we're gonna develop things to go forward or what we did that made us successful and what would help someone else may take away from it as getting them successful. That's the reason why we put this together. And, and um, 
I, I just hope that people don't sit here shy and walk away and say that, you know, that was a useless meeting because it can be a useless meeting if, if people don't get involved. But if you get involved, we have an opportunity to give Lowell kids something that we're, we're in a competition with Drakets and Tingsboro's and everything else for everything we do, whether it's a service the kids are going to, whether it's a baseball field or hockey or anything. Some kids can afford AAU in this city and some kids can't. Some kids can afford to have their father take them to a, a job interview or a job and help them. But Mass Hires here saying, hey, come see us and we'll help you develop those skills so that we can bring you to the table. CPR, when you look at the CPR and the first aid, everyone in here needs a student to have that. Somebody on a baseball field can save another kid's life. So I, I think that's a valuable resource. And you know, we're watching REC give that out for free. Our city has a lot of opportunity, but how do we bring it to the kids? How do we bring it to the families that maybe don't speak our language? Or you know, how do we develop something that's gonna work? And the start is all of you. You came here tonight. So we really, really want to hear your voice, or, or you know, we could have you know, not had this, and, and we don't want you to walk away from here and think that we're not ready to listen to you. I begged Mass Hire for more kids last year because we had so many things that we could have done, um, and, and Peter and Caitlin are doing the same thing, and many of you understand just at your baseball fields or, your, or you know, the boys club and stuff, um, so please send the message to the city that you know we're here and we're trying to develop we're trying to change the culture so we are no longer looked at as the lower economical end that we're actually bringing kids we're giving them life skills so that they can succeed like like all of us have i went to the boys club as a kid i played on all these fields mass high i wasn't there when i was a kid i'm too old for that but you know when you look around i, I truly think that all of you have value and and i hope that you're not shy and, and you really would come up to this microphone. The only thing I would ask is you get to the microphone because I don't know how well the back of this room can hear anything. I, I, I don't know that last time they told us they couldn't really hear much. So I truly would wish that more people would, you know, maybe take off their shyness and, and tell us, you know, their story or how that we can help. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Alexis Ploss, and I am the program coordinator for DIY Lowell. Um, we are a small grassroots group here in Lowell um, with a fiscal sponsorship through Coalition for a Better Acre. Um, we run projects that are planned and organized by community members, but our flagship program is our Young Ideas Project in which we partner with outside orgs um, to come in and provide skill building, networking, and other technical support to youth um, to help them in developing, planning, organizing, and completing a project or event in the city. Um, in addition to that, we do also hire two to four youth during the summer for idea recruitment. Um, each year during um, September or October, we host an idea summit in which we collect all of those ideas and have the community vote on them. The winning projects are then executed by community leader groups um, throughout the city. Um, so we use the youth to connect with everyone in the city to make sure that we're getting diverse ideas um, so that everyone in the city's voice is heard. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone, counselors. Uh, Ryan Rook, 256 Andover Street. Um, I'm actually going to steal Matt's idea and ask the rest of the baseball guys and, and, and gals to come on up. I'm sure you want to say something, but at least come on. Yeah. Me a whale. I'm, I'm Maria. <coughs> um, you know, m my goal here is that you know, seeing everybody here together is really it, it really you know inspires me. Um, so I know you guys have done a great job um, rallying the troops, and you know we're here to make sure that you know, that call is answered. Um, I've been involved in youth sports since 1997. Um, I know I'm a lot younger than I look, so. Um, you know, so I've been, I've been around the block quite a bit. I've, I've been involved, you know, since day one. I know that once you volunteer for something, they, they sometimes they never let you go. I know that this is the, this is the, some of the folks here as well. Um, one of the things that you mentioned about, you know, getting the word out, you know, um, the Highlands alone, we have, you know, over 500 kids enrolled in both baseball, softball, and basketball. You know, I have a database of about 7,000, 8,000 emails. 
we have 1,200 Facebook friends, and someone told me we had 300,000 Facebook impressions. I'm not sure what that means, but it sounds like people, people are paying attention. And you know, combining that with all, all of us here, it is something that you know, we do have a, a good voice in the city. And what we're really looking for is the coordination between the other you know, areas, other departments, the city, that, that um, you know, like the parks department, the rec department's doing a great job. I know that when it comes to you know, the physical toll of like working on the fields, um, a lot of the organizations behind me rely strictly on volunteers. You know, um, it's not everyone is blessed to have a, a sprinkler person in their personnel or a landscaper that's part of their coaching staff. You know, some of us have that. Um, so what we're looking for from the city's perspective is, you know, a little bit more, more proactive. You know, the, the folks that, um, like Shannon and, 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 the, and the Parks Department, they do a great job. They're always there when we need something. But I think that, you know, putting our heads together, and we've done this quite a bit recently just coordinating our leagues together and, and playing and as one big Lowell baseball league or softball league, um, getting a little bit more coordination with the city on where, where things stand. Um, I know sometimes we have earmarks from, from the state reps. Sometimes they, they, they're there and they sort of sit around and they don't necessarily get used efficiently. So I think um, having us have more input on that, we'd be, we'd be happy to do that. Um, the other thing I think of is that, and again, this is, this is Matt's idea that I just stole, so I'm giving him more credit, is that when we, we are privately funded, we, we don't work with any grants, we don't get grants from state, city, federal, any of those things. We're all privately fundraised through private organizations and registration fees. Now, you know, asking some people for registration fees, and, and they're low, they're $50, $75, they're not usually breaking the bank, but if you're on a fixed income or maybe, you know, you're, your, your parents aren't really paying attention and you know, maybe the kids are paying attention, you know, $50 or $75 is a lot. So we all here collectively offer scholarships to kids that need them anytime they do. But it is something that it would be great if there was some sort of kind of general fund that the city would have that would maybe subsidize that a little bit so that if, if someone through you know, either the rec department or they talk to their, their PE teacher talking about sports, you know, I've had a few folks reach out to me from the, some of the homeless shelters saying, you know, I have a mom and she's got two sons. Can they come and play for free? And I'm like, absolutely. You know, we, we get them enrolled. But a little bit more outreach and a little more formal program like that, you know, I think would help out. So, you know, from a funding perspective, obviously, you know, more, more work with the fields, whether it's leveling the fields, closing them, opening them. You know, our irrigation systems have been spotty at best. So getting a little bit more coordination with building and lands, parks department, I think that that would be helpful. And I know sometimes it's budget and sometimes it's resources, but you know, we're all kind of so sort of fighting for the same human capital, even when it comes to baseball. And you know, obviously hiring processes are been kind of front and center these days. So when we're competing for that kind of human capital, we'll make sure that we're all sort of on the same page with that. Um, all right, I'll, 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 I'll turn it over to anybody else who wants to yell into the microphone there. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Hello, my name is Maria Claudio, President Roberto Clemente. He's my interpreter. Yo envié un comunicado no hace mucho a parte de los CIRI que a nosotros, a mí me gustaría que aquí hubiera una academia deportiva de baseball. Maria Claudio has, uh, first of all, she's the president of the league, uh, Roberto Clemente, here in Lowell. And she, in the past has been uh, communicating with the uh, city councilors and city officials in um, suggesting to put um, an academia, an academy, a sport academy. Mm -hmm. yeah. A baseball academy, que los niños no tengamos que salir para otro sitio a coger nuestro training. So that the kids don't have to be um, going out of the city in to get the trainings. También nos gustaría que hiciéramos equipos deportivos como que nos vengan a visitar internacionales como lo hemos hecho nosotros. She would like also um, more teams to come and visit, like she has done, visit in other, other cities and other states. Que se hagan los torneos internacionales aquí y que no tengamos que viajar a otras ciudades. She would like the international turn tournaments to be here, done here, instead of her traveling and getting out of the state. Yeah. Como saben, nosotros nos han visitado Puerto Rico, República Dominicana, Colombia. 
We have um, teams coming from Colombia. We had teams coming from Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Y lo más importante es que nos gustaría que aquí hicieran una academia deportiva para ofrecer clínicas deportivas a los jóvenes de aquí. She definitely would like a sports academy here in Lowell so that all the youth can join freely and we don't have to do nothing in another state or in another city. Y que toda la liga se unieran en eso. And she would like all the leagues to also get unified and work together in pro of the youth. Thank you. Thank you, gracias. <laughs> and then now, now I'm going to speak. My name is Betsy Toro St. Ange. I have a community page called Comunidad de Lowell on Facebook. I administrate the page as well. And I also offer, offer services to the community, local services. And I partner up with Lawrence um, organizations and also in Lowell, various organizations. Um, I actually work in the open pantry of the Merrimack Valley. We serve all the Merrimack Valley and nearby cities with food, toiletries, anything that the youth, um, the most vulnerable people in our city may need, the homeless, anybody. We have open doors for everybody and we work from Monday through Friday. Also, um, I wanna say we're, um, my, in my page, as a community page, we're not a 501c3, we're not a, uh, a nonprofit organization, but our services are free. We help the community with looking for apartments, affordable apartments under $2,000. We advocate for uh, parents, students, low uh, public school students, and anything that they may need. We help parents with the IEP process, uh, 501 uh, plans, safety plans in the schools. We do everything at no cost. We go to the low uh, house court to represent families because we do advocacy, but we do everything at no cost at all, out of the kindness of our heart, basically. We have no grants, we don't do no funds. We're just a good, you know, team willing to help, you know, in doing these good deeds with the community. So anybody is, you know, welcome to come and like us on Facebook. Again, uh, the page is Comunidad de Lowell. On Facebook, it reads Community of Lowell, but everybody's invited to join, and it's numerous the things that we do. We also um, help fire victims, and we also help the homeless with food, warm meals, and in our pantry with, you know, the regular groceries and toiletries, clothes, anything that they may need. So welcome everybody to the open food pantry here in 13 Hertz Street located in Lowell, Mass. And everybody's welcome. But tonight, more than anything, I have a suggestion, and I just wrote it down, listening to everybody tonight. What really um, makes me come here tonight and is to speak on the emotion of uh, Counselor Jem. And uh, having a community page, I collect input from our youth on the issues and concerns they confront in our city. Our youth deals with the lack of diversity, equity, inclusion in our school system, job system, housing system, which leads the youth to homelessness most of the time. Uh, we also um, collect input and we know about um, uh, the struggle that they have with drug addiction, teenage you know, pregnancy, financial support in education as well. Some um, of the students don't get, you know, eligibility for financial aid or even a loan to keep, you know, with college or even pay their tuitions. Uh, I would like to suggest a, a youth council that will help our local government officials make better decisions when allocating funds to our local organizations, working with the youth, like tonight, with their specific needs. It will also allow to grow future leaders by allowing young citizens to get knowledge about our local government and how it works. In order to serve our youth more efficiently and effectively, we need to involve the youth, the youth in city planning. And I know our community will be in support. And youth councils are also supported by the Mass General Laws. It's in uh, chapter 40, section 8.3. You can take a look at that. 
And uh, I've seen it in other, other cities, so why not you know, suggest it for the city of Lowell? Thank you and have a great night. Thank you very much. And um, I think Councilor Yem would like to uh, address that, please. Thank you so much, Betsy, and thanks, everybody. Um, I would like to have you go ahead and um, I'll, I'll wait to, to talk about the, uh, the Youth Commission later. Please uh, step up and state your name. And, and I encourage everybody. I have a young lady that uh, come in also, and I want them also to speak to, but go ahead, please. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Anna LeMay. I am the Centerville Baseball President. Um, we are currently looking for coaches and volunteers. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Better. Oh, sorry. You can remove the masses talk so we can hear you. <laughs> sorry. Um, we are currently looking for volunteers and coaches. Um, we also just started a new team. It's called the Warriors, and I'm going to let Kelly talk more about that because she is actually the head of that uh, team that we just created. Thank you. I'm Kelly Ash. I'm from 569 Beacon Street, and I am involved with Centerville Baseball, have been for several years now with my own child. Uh, I work in the public schools as a para, and I see a need for a team for children who have special needs. We don't currently have anything like that in the city, so I decided I'm gonna just start one because we need one. Currently, we are open only for children in Centerville, only because it's our first year, and we don't know how many children we're going to have or if we'll have enough people to staff it. Once we have an idea of that, we will open it to the other sections of the city if they have a need to join our team. It's going to be for children five to 15, um, all ages. It's strictly instructional. We will not have games, we will not compete. The idea I have in my head is for children to just feel that they are a part of a team to be able to maybe learn some skills in baseball, and ideally if they stay with us long enough to be able to graduate on into a regular baseball team. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to have anyone and everyone who is willing to help us out, please come. I am having an informational meeting next Thursday night at the McAuliffe at 6 p.m., mostly for parents who may be nervous about their child um, they will have to have a buddy with them, especially children with sensory processing issues um, who may not be able to handle the space mm. of a baseball field or the noises and anything that comes along with it. Um, and that's really it. Please, you know, if you're interested, come to the information night. It is something that I'm hoping will be huge for our league and for the children in the city. What's the um, what's the the group that you will? It's Centerville Baseball League, and the team is going to be called the um, Centerville Warriors, because I feel that these kids have a lot of struggles in their lives, and they are all warriors. Have Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. Kelly, have you looked into the Step program? Uh, is it the Step program? It's special teams for exceptional people. They actually do this. Uh, they they actually do that in our city. So they have a they do beat ball, they do kick ball, they meet. I know they were renting Calorie Park for a long, well, they were getting Calorie Park for a used field for a long time, but. Don't know uh, anything about it. So it's the, it's a step been working program. Working in the schools and working in the city in early intervention for many years, I've never heard of it. Yeah. So if I've never heard of it, I'm sure the majority of our parents have never heard of it. And that's probably what we need, that's why we're Which having these Which is why we meetings. need these meetings. Yeah. We need to reach out to our parents. It's great to send home a flyer with your kids. That's awesome. But you know what happens to that flyer? It's stuffed in their backpack and never seen again. So we need to, as a city, think of a stronger way to reach out to the parents. The older kids are great. We can reach them in high school. They, you can talk to them there. But the younger kids, and especially the kids who are special, that have different abilities, their parents don't know they just, they're not getting the information. And our, even our regular children are not, the parents aren't getting the information. So we need to come up with a better way of communicating to them. But thank you. Yeah, I'll give you the website. <laughs> I'll, I'll write down the website for you so you Great. can actually look at it. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. 
Constantly am. I'll be quick, I promise. Um, <laughs> Matt Lelasher, uh, 39 Perrin Way, and the uh, head of the Pawtuckerville Youth Organization. Um, I, I just wanted to kind of touch upon some things that have been already said and just maybe give the, for everyone that's here tonight, how important this actually is. Uh, the decision for all of us in this city to invest in our youth is the investment in the city. And for far too long, we have, we have been disparate and different, gone different directions, and so many good people are trying so hard to do the right thing that it's meetings like this and conversations like this that can make us more efficient and get more done. So I thank Councilor Robinson and uh, Councilors uh, Gitchier and Yem for, for bringing this forward. Uh, you know, e examples of, of what I'm, I'm speaking of. In Pawtucketville, we recently were able to acquire funds to redo two fields. When we were done doing the fields, we came to find out that even through efforts to know this ahead of time, that we didn't have working irrigation. This story comes up over and over again. And I'm not pointing the finger at anyone in particular because I know we're short-staffed and I know we have issues that, that no one individual could solve. But what happens is, and we have an example of it at our high school field, at alumni, we had a brand new field put in place. Watering system wasn't able to perform the way it was supposed to, and we had to go back and repair it just this past year. Well, by the grace of God, we had a lot of rain in July this year, or we would have lost a $35,000 infield, two of them, this past year. And that leaves an organization like, like any of ours coming back five years from now looking to replace an infield so that the kids can have a good infield. So it's that type of coordination up front that we'd be looking for moving forward. And, and just a simple idea and, and something that, that I heard tonight that is there a way for us to utilize some of the youth that are in that range from the 14 to 24 in a form of like an apprenticeship program to be working inside our DPWs so that I understand that the people that are working there uh, are are union employees that deserve to be making a, a good wage and, and working hard for the people of the city, but there's only so much they can do. And there's only so much the city can do with the budget that we have. So let's be creative nights like this with volunteers like this. Look at what we have with the Lowell Litter Crew and how much they've been able to help. Well, you've got a youth organization or a set of organizations around here that are willing to do the same thing. But what we need to do is, is coordinate with everyone and make sure that those things are placed at the forefront. Um, so I wanted to reiterate what Ryan had said in the irrigation. I also wanted to make a point, Councillor Drinkwater had uh, put a uh, motion forward for youth build to build uh, picnic benches at all of the parks. And it looks like that is moving forward. Well, it's another example of as long as we're in communication with the unions and with other staff members about the things that we need, I think we can get these things done. Dugout roofs being replaced, um, things being painted, you know, replacement of, of, of simple things like a lock at, at one of the, uh, you know, one of our restrooms. Obviously, that has to be potentially done by city. But we have so many examples of small things and individuals in the city in these groups that would happily move forward and do most of these things. So if we can create the process so that we're not stepping on anyone's toes inside the city, but we are still getting things done, I think hopefully we come out of a meeting like tonight trying to accomplish something along those lines. So I thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I couldn't agree more. I myself, former union president, um, I've worked with various groups throughout the community in, in different projects. And, and I think, again, I think you, you hit the nail right on the head. I think a lot of times, like we mentioned so many times tonight, it starts with a conversation. And, and, and we all have the same common goal. Our employees of the city, our organizations of the city, our residents of the city, we have the same goal, is, is, is to improve our city. So I think um, these conversations are, are, are key. Sorry to come back, but I just forgot to say one thing that's just one more thing I wanted to leave as we leave tonight. An example, we were trying to replace further fields in Pawtucketville to see if we could get all of our fields looking right. We had a private company that does work and a couple companies come in and give us examples of what it would cost to do that work. Shockingly, it was lower than I ever would have imagined. So instead of sitting in Pawtucketville, we brought them around to all of the infields in the city of Lowell. 
we would have an opportunity to potentially bring all of our fields up to a standard that everyone would be proud of driving by and then our kids would be proud of playing on for approximately $200,000. In the grand scheme, when you think that it just cost 75,000 to do two fields, th but this is an example of we have to be we have to be able to work through these things with procurement and other things that are done properly to make sure that we can achieve these things. But we we have to have these conversations when it, when an opportunity for companies that are doing work in Boston, they're doing work in Worcester. So the example exists. It's not like they're not working in conjunction with other unions around the state. We just have to sit down and talk about these opportunities for some of these things to come forward because it would be an absolute shame to, to Maria's point earlier. When we have a chance, we now have uh, elite baseball being played in Lowell and elite other sports that are played in Lowell. We can bring people in from all around the state and potentially all around the country. We have some of the best facilities as far as the physical footprint. The upkeep hasn't been great, but the physical footprint is as good as any of the cities and towns that are around here. We bring those up to a standard. Now we're bringing people in and showing Lowell off, showing Lowell off in a way that we all want to be proud of. And, and that's our chance. And it can be done if we work our way through you know, what, what people would call the red tape of trying to get things done. And that's what I hope tonight leads towards. So thank you for doing that. Matt, one of, one of the major challenges um, bringing people to the city on Maria's point and also your point is changing the footprint of the fields, you know, to 50, 70. Nobody wants to come to a 46, 60 field. They want the 50, 70s. And the footprint where they're all put is part of the problem. So you'll, you'll end up, you know, losing a field or, or trying to redesign. That That's really the major issue in the city is do you redo a, you know, 40, 60 field or do you go with the bigger? And, and that's a real challenge. And that needs the conversation, like you're saying. And, and I think that Maria's on to something. How do we do that and, and bring people here? Because 200 feet at 50, 70 is too small. And that's what is behind the Daly School. That's what's at Pawtucketville, where you're into the hill over there. Those are the designs of our fields. You know, Maybe Centerville, you could do something like that. But when you look at a lot of our fields, they're not designed to, to handle those those big fields that and now bringing people into the city, but I'll leave it at that. I just wanted to say that. Real briefly, Councilor Yum, so. If you wanna just touch on that, what do you think of the Yeah. Yeah. Um, after hearing all that and see all the people, you know, what the, um, what the city needs is um, to create a youth commission um, right. under the Mass General Law. Uh, section uh, chapter 40 section 8e it reads a city or town which accept this section may establish a youth commission here and after call the commission for the purpose of carry out program which may be designed or established to meet opportunity challenges and problem of youth of said cities and town in conjunction with any similar or related pro, uh, programs of any agency uh, of the Commonwealth or any agencies, the federal government. This is the, what we need. The commission shall consist not less than three or more than 21 members. Um, the, the youth program, if you look at other cities and town, they establish and then the comprise members age of 12 to 18 or 19, they would be uh, appointed uh, in a plan E government by the, um, the city managers and they providing um, the leadership and issue facing the youth of that city. So um, I, after hearing all this, after seeing all these uh, activities and make me think that this is time for the city to create the youth commission. So tonight, you know, I make a motion that the city of law, that the subcommittee would uh, recommend that the city of law create the um, a youth commission. And um, uh, that will be my motion. And, and then uh, we all can, can vote and recommend to the council at large. There are 27 commission and board in the city of Lowell. There's none, it's a youth commission. And if you Google the word youth commission, you see all other cities and town has one except Lowell. And this is what we need to do to establish, to have youth 
come together, advise us. Here we are, the city councilor, and work together with the agency that are here tonight, you know, to provide program, activity that are facing the youth. So this is our motion, my motion tonight, and I would love to have a roll call. I would second that. Okay. I'll second the motion, okay. Mr. Clerk. Roll call, please. Chairman Robinson. Yes. Councilor Gitchia. Yes. Councilor Yep. Yes. Three yes. Thank you. Um, our next speaker, please. Uh, my name is Yun Jitia, and I'm the executive director of Coalition for a Better Acre. Um, uh, we have youth programs, but I actually had a couple uh, comments, um, you know, listening to everyone here. So, um, one of the things I think is missing is we don't really know like what kinds of programs that we have. I know there are some program listings that, um, that does come out, but I think we need a comprehensive um, resource mapping in the city. Who's doing what and what population are they serving for and having a comprehensive list so that we can actually look at and see what's missing. Uh, one of the type of programs that I always think that City of Lowell is missing is a drop-in center for teens that's not structured. So what you tech used to to be um, in the 10, 15 years ago, they're no longer um, serving that population. And um, I have a huge concern about what some of the um, teens that are not going to the Boys and Girls Club and not going to some of these programs or not playing uh, baseballs, um, what are they doing and where are they going and having a positive place that they can um, play basketball and you know hopefully have positive adults that you know can influence them and to get into doing um, you know getting into um, you know structured programming or you know different type of interests so I think that's something that's really needed and then the other comment that I have you know hearing about all the baseball leagues and I've actually been talking a lot with Maria Claudio and, and this is just my lack of understanding, but I don't understand why city can't provide porta potties, basic needs, simple basic needs, and why do they have to raise money to you know, have porta potties? And that's something that I think should be provided by the parks, you know, that's, and along with that, you know, lawn care and all of that, and I, you know, I really appreciate everyone you know, raising money to do that, but that should be um, City of Lowell's responsibility and you know, I do think that there are you know ways like you know, CPA funds, ARPA funds, to be able to um, you know pay for some of these um, um, these like basic essential things for them to um, have positive experience for the young people. So um, I um, so I just wanted to put my two cents in for that. So thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Keith Udy. I live at 28 Halley Road, Low Mass. I'm a former uh, Acre Youth President for over 30 years. I was a former board, board member for the CBA Youth Organization, the Low Boys Club, Kids and Disability Sports. Um, I agree with a lot of the speakers. That's a good thing about speaking last. Everybody's already said what you wanted to say, so that's good. So you have to say little. Thank you, Matt. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to see a committee has finally been established. Someone has been brought up uh, in a big family from the acre without the uh, sports that were sponsored by the recreation department years ago in the 60s. We wouldn't have had access to a lot of the sports. We couldn't afford sports um, if sports were free. The recreation department helped sponsor that years ago. And we got away from it, I want to say, somewhere in the 80s and 90s because of budget uh, deficits. But I think it's time. Time is everything in life. And right now, a lot of our children, now youth, have been homebound for two years. No social interacting. Now's the best time. Uh, we got a great young committee um, that wants to spearhead a lot of these programs. I think what we have to try to do is try to get the information out there more that I think uh, people have mentioned earlier through the uh, city's website and the schools, our local schools, letting them know the programs that are available. Also, what I'm currently doing, I, I just retired from this city, and as a union president, I worked for the city for 32 years, and I was a union president. Now I'm involved with the Low Police Athletic League boxing team. I mean, when I speak to people about it, people don't even know where they have a boxing team. So this stuff, information has to get out there. 
I think also we, what we have to do is because we have kids that live in South Lowell, Centerville, Patekville, don't have access to a lot of these, we have to offer some type of transportation for these children and their parents to try to get to these programs. Um, I think it's un very unfair when we hold the programs. You try to hold it someplace neutral if you can, uh, rather than trying to spread out your programs because, as you know, the cost in getting people there at different buildings, different sites, costs a lot more money than having that one site. But a lot of people don't have access to get to that one site, and I think that's very important. I, I like to see a couple of things brought back uh, through the years. I, I know we have a great recreation department. For years and years as a young kid, growing up in the Acre, we used to have Saturday recreation programs. We used to have open gym for kids between, you'd have probably the younger kids, 9 to 12, go there early in the morning, and then in the afternoon you'd have the older kids from maybe 12 to 14. You just have open gym, play basketball, whatever you want to do. It's a community builder. It helps get these kids off the street and build a little community, a little competition. We used to have city recreation championships. Baseball, basketball, different uh, uh, neighborhood organizations would play each other for the city championships. We've gotten away from that. It was a community builder. So the kid you played, you participated against from the acre, you played in Centerville. That kid was my same age. I also played with him in high school. So you get to know each other at a younger age. It's a community builder. I, um, I think there was just so much said here, and I'm so glad. And, I, and, and I'm seeing we're going in different directions, and I like that, because it isn't all about sports. I know a lot of us growing up looking at Everett on the board, a lot of those kids grew up on sports. That's how we met a lot of our friends. Well, not everybody's into sports, and I think we need to spread out. I'm glad to see we're having job opportunities here. We're talking about the mass hires. We're talking about leadership program. Youth leadership programs, they're our future leaders of all. Without people teaching them today the right way of doing things and getting along with one another and respect to one another, what happens tomorrow? So I think time is everything. Where these kids have been locked up for two years, and I don't mean locked up, but inbound, and, and they need to get out and socialize, we need to give them a direction. And we need to have this information accessible to people so people not only have computers, but they hear it through schools and neighborhood programs. We need to have that, that uh, information get out to these people. Thank you, and I, and I appreciate the board getting together, and hopefully uh, we can get these programs and we get low back where it used to be, together. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Amanda Sullivan. And my name's Nick DiGiamo. I've lived in Centerville on 954 Lakeview Ave. Uh, I used to live in Lowell. Um, it feels like a long time ago now, but we actually work um, through CTI as part of the Youth Services Program, which is located right around the corner at 167 Dutton Street. Um, just This is more of a resource sharing kind of opportunity for us, just because we don't really have any opportunities for employment. Um, we partner very closely actually with Mass Hire uh, and Heather's program, but uh, just something to be mindful of, of some resources that are really local. Um, our programs are specifically geared towards youth and young adults between the ages of 14 and 26. Um, so the catchment really is around youth and young adults who are experiencing housing instability or homelessness. Um, and so we have a variety of programs that we operate that range from young people accessing basic needs and services to get connected to case management. Um, and on top of that, move through kind of a continuum that works towards stability and independence. Um, so it's not just Lowell that we provide services to, we do also connect with several other communities in the area, actually 31 other communities, um, but we just happen to have our hub right around the corner. Um, and so with that too, like our basic needs services that we offer, we have a day program that's right there too called the Milieu, and where young people can go in, they can actually access the space. Uh, we have a food pantry there that uh, we partner with the Merrimack Valley Food Bank, um, and so young people can come in, get food there, they can actually shower, do laundry, um, and kind of have a safe spot for people to hang out um, and just have conversations and build rapport with some staff. Um, our housing programs are pretty robust. Um, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about what our housing programs are, Nick, because Nick's, um, he's our program manager uh, for that, for youth services, um, but specializes in our housing area. So I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about what that looks like. Sure. Um, most of our programming is, well, all of our ho housing programming right now is geared towards 18 plus, um, but a lot of the programming that we work on is designed to help uh, on upstream scale, so like for young adults who are experiencing housing instability in their uh, parental home life or they've been bouncing around for a long time, we have a lot of resources that'll help them kind of stabilize um, in whatever way works best for them. Uh, we have transitional housing, um, which is short-term supportive housing. We have rapid rehousing, um, which is more independent um, for like leasing and uh, independent apartments and things like that. 
we work with Middlesex Community College and UMass Lowell for a pilot program that provides uh, five beds to housing insecure college students throughout their breaks um, and um, their winter breaks and like their school breaks, summer breaks, uh, provides them room and board for all their schooling up until graduation, which is really cool. Um, and we also work with the housing authority in Lowell and uh, Department of Children and Families to provide vouchers um, to DCF, um, historical DCF and foster care young adults. Um, we have several programs that help support young adults who are aging out of foster care. Um, we also, um, we, have, we just have a lot of supportive housing programs. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into every detail about them, but the point is that um, a space like this is really important for that because even though they might not be of housing age right now, um, getting them connected to services that can support them once they're ready for that um, is gonna help. Yeah, and one more thing that I just wanted to throw into in, in talking about what the committee looks like for youth and young adults. Um, I know that there are a lot of kind of active efforts across different resources uh, in the city of Lowell that really bring together young people to have like really big conversations and powerful conversations. Um, and so I think that that's gonna be a really great opportunity to bring everyone together. Um, through youth services, we host a youth action board m once a month. Um, and actually our third birthday is what, next week? Uh, so we've been operating this group of young people. Um, well, we've been supporting this group of young people for the past three years, basically just coming into the space, talking about what some of the barriers are that they're facing, specifically around housing and homelessness or just general barriers to access education, employment, any of the things that are coming up. Um, and so I think kind of you know, furthering this opportunity to get more young people connected and involved on a larger scale is, is crucial and very important for, for all parties involved. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Sorry. Hi, my name is uh, Mayor Mitchell. I um, represent Lola NFL flag. I run a, a kids flag football program out at Cauley Stadium every year. Um, a lot of good speakers today. They all touched on a lot of the things that we're struggling with too, with volunteers and coaches and communication directly to reaching the parents. One of the barriers I think with reaching the parents is um, we get our flyer approved through the city or the school department and then they make us um, print off a flyer for the kids so that they have an opportunity to take them home. You're talking the age range that we serve is 15, five to 17 so I'm printing 1,500 to 2,000 flyers, and then I'm dropping them off at every one of the schools just to make sure that every kid gets it. And for the most part, like somebody else said, you hand the kid a flyer, and they throw it in their backpack, and they throw it in the trash. That's a large expense when you're talking about 1,500 flyers. We're a totally volunteer organization, so we're, we, too, are looking for volunteers, for coaches, and for referees and staff. Um, and one of the things that we try to do, for the most part, is keep our fees as low as possible. We're probably the lowest NFL flag organization in the Massachusetts area, um, basically doing it at cost, um, which includes providing jerseys and flags to the, each one of the kids. Um, but with that said, um, another air barrier to entry too is the fact that with flag football, there's a big requirement to use a multi-purpose field. And really the only field that is adequate enough to serve children for football in this area is Cauley Stadium, which comes with the cost of a custodian. Um, the other multi-purpose fields really don't serve that purpose because of the uneven surfaces, um, rocks and gravel that are in the field, and because you're playing football, there's a potential for the kids to fall and cut themselves. Um, there are additional fields in the area, but there are other programs in the city that hold the lock on a lot of the multi-purpose fields where they're not available because those programs hold the long-term permits for them. And you drive by them and they're just not being used. They just hold the permit just for practices or whatever the case is. But for the most part, 90% of the time, there's nobody on them. Um, so it would be nice to try to get the city to try to release some of those permits if they're not being used. Um, and then also try to um, I'm gonna reach out to the Parks Department to get like an electronic submission so that maybe we could reach the parents a little easier rather than doing paper advertising. Um, but that's, that's all I had, um, and thank you for having this.
Thank you. I'm sorry. There was a call I got today from one of the coaches from one of the leads, and, and I know um, the prior speaker just mentioned. I'm hoping that we can work. I had problems with them for years, and I spoke before the city council a couple times. I hope we can work with the school department of opening up these schools after hours. I think sometimes they think it's their building, and they forget. I'm not fighting about whose building it is. You built that. When you built that school in our neighborhood and you said to us neighbors, we want to open this after hours and make it accessible for the youth programs after hours, and then we go to get permits, and they give you, some of these schools just give you a hard time. And a lot of us, most of us, are all volunteers. We have children, we, our grandchildren, we come home at night, we just want to help our neighborhood by helping the coach, and then we're getting problems from the schools. I understand if you've got an after-school program for that school and you want to use it for, that, you know, for their children, that's fine. But some of these schools, I hope we can branch out through this city council, or reaching out to the school department and opening these doors for the kids so we can uh, use these facilities, um, especially at rainy nights. We want to have a meeting there or something like that. It seems like we're not, well, well, we're not welcome very well, these youth organizations. That's just my, my personal experience with them. Thank you. So a couple of things. I think from what we're hearing from a lot of the speakers is getting notifications out is, is a huge piece of everything that we do. So I, I think that in a future um, committee meeting, I, I would ask uh, through a motion that we invite the school department um, to come here. And, and I think that I, I think that when we when we get them to come into the conversation and we give them an outline beforehand of what we're going to talk about, I think it gives them an opportunity to be prepared for the conversation. I think it's unfair to just say something is one way without having them involved in the conversation because there's a lot of moving pieces that a lot of us don't know about. Um, one, one thing that really interests me is that a lot of these schools have no, they have a list of emails for everybody and we could probably cut down on the paper and cutting down trees and everything else if we had a standardized form that we could fill out in order to share information that way to a parent in an email or, or something like that, whether it be the Lowell Public School System or Greater Lowell Tech or to the charter schools, we should have some kind of joint agreement so that we could do that. And I think inviting people into the conversation is a little bit easier than, than saying that we don't know the reasons why things can't happen. There, there may be the system's geared towards a certain way and you can't share emails that way. but. I think asking Dr. Boyd to send over people, you know, to at least be part of the conversation and we outline what we want to speak about beforehand uh, gives them an opportunity to prepare for the meeting and, and actually engage with the community. Other than that, I think that it's just wasted time. Um, so I think that in fairness to everybody, and, and the school department's been pretty good to me when I, when I pick up the phone and call, they're very responsive, they, they're very uh, workable, um, they're always, it's an enjoyable conversation. So. I think that um, going forward, I, I would make a motion that uh, the next meeting we would invite the school department to talk about maybe creating an email list that we could uh, send over and use that rather than always going to a principal and handing them the, um, I just made that motion really long for you, Michael, but rather than handing them more paper that just gets thrown out on the way home. I think the email system, we do it for inclement weather, we do it for a lot of different reasons. Um, maybe that's the easy way to do it, and we're all about greener. So I, I think that that would be the thing. So I guess the motion would be uh, in the form of a motion to invite the school department here uh, to talk about using the email system for notifications for whether it be hiring process or um, athletic events or the recreation department you, that way. So um, Second it. Roll call. Chairman Robinson. Yes. Council Gitchia. Yes. Uh, Council Liam. Yes. Three years. So I, I just want to end it by, you know, we're, we're really not here to, to us versus them or anything in between. And I don't think any of the speakers meant, meant that way. They meant that it's just tough to, you, you get frustrated when you go through a system and it's just, there's one curve and another to hit and not everybody's proficient with computers. There's a lot of things that move in each building um, and there's a lot of moving pieces with you know, um, these buildings being maintained also. So th there are issues in between. You need time to clean these courts and stuff like that. So um, I, I do thank everyone for coming out. I, I think this was one of the most interesting committee meetings that I've had since I started on, on the city council. 
I, I enjoy uh, thinking that there's this many people in a room taking their time out of their day to try to make it better for every um, child in the city and, and make it so that they're not only getting the, the resources to meet other people, but they're also going to have an opportunity to get the resources to have a work career going forward. And I, I personally thank all of you for coming out tonight. I'd like to thank you all as well. I believe we might have one more speaker real quick, but um, one thing I can say based on um, my experiences in the past month or so, I mean, I know things have been done a lot differently in the past, but uh, my experience working with the school department so far has been nothing but positive. Uh, we, re we reached out, we, we came up with the idea to open up a, a drop-in or open gym style center during school vacation week. And I think we, we dropped it in their lap with like not even two weeks of prep time. And, and the rec department and the, and the little schools worked together and they made it happen at the Butler and the Robinson Wednesday and Thursday. So I mean, how it has been doesn't necessarily mean that's how it has to be. And I think everyone in this room is proof that uh, people are willing to make these changes and work together. So as long as we're willing to do that, I think uh, a lot of good things are gonna come out of this. Thank you. Thank you so much, and I'll keep this short since we'll have a more planned conversation next time, but I did want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Latifa Phillips. I'm the Chief Equity and Engagement Officer for Low Public Schools. Um, my office directly oversees um, community engagement, family engagement, and communications. So all of the things I was hearing tonight um, were already on my list of things that I wanted to know more about because um, we definitely can improve. So w I will come prepared next time and I'll let Dr. Boyd know as well. But I did wanna let you know that, that I am here and listening and, um, and thankful for the invitation. And I also have um, Vanat Kin here, um, if he can quickly introduce himself as well because he's, he's kind of my right, right arm for family engagement. Hi everyone, I'm Vanat Kin with the Equity Office at Lowell Public Schools. I just wanted to echo some of the thoughts and sentiments of previous speakers and that we need to make sure that our programs are accessible. And in doing so, we need to make sure that our programs are um, have materials that are translated, um, that we're doing uh, communication and conversations in other languages. In Lowell Public Schools, we have thousands of youth that speak Portuguese, Spanish, Khmer, and other languages at home. Um, and I'm speaking as, um, as someone with a with a background where I wasn't exposed to programs like this, right? And it wasn't just a language barrier, it was also a cultural barrier too. We need to reach out to our neighbors and reach out um, to people who don't necessarily see these programs as for them, and then let them know that they're also part of a city just like as much as anyone else. And to Vanak's point, our district has 28% English learners. Um, our top three languages are um, Portuguese, Khmer, and Spanish. And so we have made a commitment to um, putting all of our outreach in those three languages. Um, if it's a high stakes communication, we go to our top eight languages. Um, but the, the translation is one piece. The, the relationships and the trust building is another piece. So um, that's something that we continue to work on. But I think as, as we build out this larger partnership, um, that'll be important for all of us to, um, to commit to that type of access for all of our families. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, guys. My name's Lionel Saint I live at 433 Central Street. Thank you for this committee. Sports, we all love it. Very easy growing up. These programs, I think, for like you, what's going to attract them to go to that program, to go to Mass Health. I think that's where you get caught up. I grew up in the Acre. We didn't have all these programs. We didn't have guidance like, hey, I played baseball, football my whole life, easy. But where was the guidance to stay or to focus on succeeding? These kids don't have guidance. I've been <laughs> gangbanging, drugs, the whole nine. Where's the focus to keep these kids from going that way? To get into leadership, to be the next you. 
Michael Jordan, Shinseko, whoever you want to be. But the guidance and the attraction, so I can be like him, or I can be like her. That, I think, is what we need to focus on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Well, seeing no one, I, I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second it. Roll call. Chairman Robinson. Yes. Council Gitchia. Yes. Uh, Council Young. Yes. Roll call. Three years. And just please, um, has everybody signed a, a left the email for a point of contact? Because uh, we want to compile a working email list at minimum. So that way, I mean, we're shooting towards, if possible, maybe once a month holding these. So that way, and that way we can get an agenda out ahead of time. So then people will be better prepared as to if, if something specific on the agenda is going to um, speak to what your organization is doing or needs.